So my name is Dr. Darren Graham. I work at the Photon Science Institute at the University of Manchester. And we've been working on developing a terahertz cyclotron resonance spectrometer. We developed a new instrument to perform terahertz cyclotron resonance spectroscopy. Now, cyclotron resonance is a well-known technique that's been used since the 1960s and has helped in the development of uh, new semiconductor materials which have led to the production of light-emitting diodes and transistors. To perform cyclotron resonance spectroscopy uh, requires the application of large magnetic fields and because of the value of these techniques it's led to the development of large-scale national facilities. But scientists uh, have restricted time on these facilities and it's very competitive. And there's also a time delay between envisaging your experiment and actually performing it. What we've done is we've developed a tabletop instrument that allows us to perform terahertz cyclotron resonance spectroscopy. It allows us to formulate an idea of something we want to test or measure and be able to go down to the lab and actually do that measurement the next day. The challenge for us in being able to do cyclotron resonance spectroscopy with these magnets is being able to measure the spectrum during that fleeting magnetic field pulse. Now to solve that problem we've used asynchronous optical sampling which is a technique which uses two synchronized lasers and can scan over the time delay between the repetition rate of the lasers which is in the order of maybe one nanosecond for a gigahertz laser and we can do that measurement on a time scale which is given by the uh, frequency difference between the synchronization of the lasers so on the order of maybe seven kilohertz now that allows us within that 10 millisecond pulse of the magnetic field to acquire about 100 waveforms. So at the heart of the terahertz cyclotron resonance spectrometer is the pulse magnet system, which was developed by Professor Nojiri's group at Tohoku University. And the magnet itself can produce up to 30 tesla uh, magnetic fields. And the magnet sits inside this liquid nitrogen bath. And we connect the samples onto the end of the sapphire rod which is inserted into the bore of the magnet. And on the other side of the cryostat, we have uh, windows which will transmit the terahertz radiation through uh, the whole system. And so we can measure the absorption of our broadband terahertz radiation spectrum as a function of the applied magnetic field. Now, as the magnetic field produces a pulse, we need to measure that absorption spectrum uh, very fast. And by using the asynchronous optical sampling scheme, ASOPS, we can actually measure 100 terahertz waveforms within the 10 millisecond pulse of the magnetic field. This new instrument allows us to be able to perform terahertz cyclotron resonance spectroscopy in laboratory environment. And that means we can do a very quick turnaround between having a new idea or developing a new material and actually characterizing the fundamental properties of that material. So we can very easily measure the effective mass of carriers, the electrons or holes, uh, and we can determine the ultimate mobility that we can have for carriers in that material. Now mobility is a very important property because it tells us how easy it is to move charge around in the material from one place to another. This work is feeding into a program of work at Cambridge University uh, on studying algand gan high electron mobility transistors as these devices offer the potential for higher efficiencies and therefore uh, power savings in lots of consumer electronics.